Okay, I'm with Brad Keywell, the founder and co-chair of the Chicago Ideas Week Festival, which is more than a festival. It's, it's a way of life, it's it sounds a, like, Brad. Yeah, it's it's a, a cult at this point. No, it's, 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 it's something pretty special. It is something special. Yeah. So I guess my first question to you is, there are a lot of ideas out in the world, and there are a lot of sort of gatherings of very smart, you know, convincing people to talk about big ideas. And, and, I, and, and you're really involved in this, obviously, the founder of it. To what end are we talking about these ideas? To a sort of intentionally serendipitous end. To an end <laughs> that there's value in not knowing the end. Mm -hmm. To an end that there's value to intentionally taking yourself out of, a, out of your normal routine and exposing yourself to non-correlative, you know, intentionally provocative, disconnected ideas because, because there might be something there that matters, you know, and, and there's value. That notion of non-correlative ideas, in this day and age when everything we do seems to have a result and everything needs to be for a specific purpose, getting us out of that frame of mind seems to be both really important and also really difficult. Yeah. How do you practice that on a day-to-day -day level? Well, there's two. There's, there's a Chicago Ideas version of that, and then yeah. there's me, I suppose. But you know, the ideas, the Chicago Ideas part is that this is an ideas platform in a major city, yeah. and something of this scope and size and scale doesn't really exist in other big cities. And so, by bringing it to people, it lets you a lot more easily make it happen. And um, and on a broader sense, you know, you're right. It's hard to measure the value of exposing yourself to other people that may be interesting to me or that may be the source of inspiration. Um, right, that and, may and, be and, part and, and of... In, in a world where people are, are looking for more and more measurement to convince them that the effort is worth it, yeah. I guess as an entrepreneur, I believe that there is inherent value in the exercise and that, and that the possibility of value is something that needs to be part of a day. You know, take part of your day and open your mind to some possibilities rather than simply focus on the plan. That part about you being an entrepreneur, I mean, it would seem actually that remaining open and curious is sort of foundational to being a successful entrepreneur, is that right? I strongly agree. I mean, being, being mindfully disruptive of the status quo, mindfully uh, contrarian in, in not accepting everything the way it is, and then being open to a curious, uh, you know, making curiosity a core value is consistent to me of all the greats. The great entrepreneurs are insatiably curious. And, and it's a value that is part of Chicago Ideas, just curiosity as a valuable thing to present to a community. What You mentioned that this is like one of the only events, you know, sort of, I want to call it more than an event. This is like one of the only happenings that, that takes place in a major city. And yet cities are incubators for ideas, philosophies, they push the bounds of our curiosity and our yeah. intellect. Why is that? I mean, uh, I and what well, is it about Chicago? Well, Chicago happens to be a very welcoming community, I would say. Yeah. And, you know, it's this livable town, but it's a huge town and it's an important city in the world. The Why are there not more of things like this in, in, in big cities? Well, traditionally, platforms, ideas, conferences like this are, are far away and they're very expensive. The idea behind the inception, behind the creation of Chicago Ideas Week, was to make it very affordable and intentionally inclusive. So that the audience, the, the community that you would build would be a diverse community that would that would be unique. And and that's been a value that we've kept true, you know, core to this mission throughout. And it's working. I mean, thirty thousand plus people engaging in this in this provocative platform, I think is something that, that matters often in ways that it'll take a year or two to figure out exactly what happened as a result of, of an inspiration that happened here. Yeah, I think a lot of the times there's a sense that uh, these curated kind of moments are for the people who are participating in them on stage and not as much for the audience, but you guys throw that out We're the window, to, right? I mean, this is really about getting the message out. Yeah, they talk the about like out. flipping the classroom, all these flipping yeah. content. This is like flipping the the conference and yeah. trying to focus on the attendees and the community that's being built by and, and around the attendees and using the speakers as a source of either inspiration or provocation or perhaps um, a point of collaboration around a powerful idea where you and I might realize that we don't know each other but we both meet, 
through the Chicago Ideas platform and our binding interest is what we heard and, and our reaction to it. It's, again, it's the joy of doing it that has to be the driving force in order to do it, but I'm a believer that, 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 that great outcomes often are not evident at the start. You're a son of the Midwest. When you, when you, when we think about sort of American identity, I think a lot of people tend to use the coasts as shorthand for American identity. But like, talk to us a little bit about what is different about a major city in the Midwest, and like the ethos of, yeah. of this of this place. It's a unique combination of like the industries uh, and the industry that built our country, and the necessary evolution of of uh, technologists, entrepreneurs. Um, people who don't want to accept things the way they are. Mm -hmm. I think the mashup of, of the existing and the new is not unique to the world, but in the Midwest, I think it plays out a little bit uniquely in that, in that um, you're sort of in this laboratory figuring out how the old and the new combine and, and what, what comes out of it. It's, it's, it really is a unique place to be, and, and as an entrepreneur, it's a, great, it's a great place to be. Chicago just gave you some sunshine yeah. for that answer. Um, all right, the so worst lightning round here. Okay, these are just fun questions. Okay. If you could time travel, would you go forward or backward? Forward, for sure. Favorite country you've ever visited? Um, hard one, but probably, I, I was just in Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic and I thought it was brilliant. Call or text? Uh, call, old school. Last thing that made you I still you use a Blackberry and an iPhone. But Whoa! Yeah. Well, uh, iPhone, you're Both, reading. right. Last thing that made you laugh? Um, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, comedians and cars getting coffee. Uh, pick them, pick they're all good. Um, what keeps you up at night? Probably the excitement of the next day. I want, I want that yeah. life. Sweet or savory? Uh, combination. Ow! Yeah, Chocolate covered pretzels. All right, last yeah. question. One, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Um, probably seeing what people are thinking because it would answer a lot of questions. So it yeah. would. Brad, it's awesome okay. to meet you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. Good Pleasure. luck with everything. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks so much.